Hello everybody, I'm Janice Ray and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how I make homemade cheesy scalped potatoes for one point per serving on purple. That's right, one, one point. It's going to serve about eight to ten. And on blue or green, it will be more points because you'd have to count the potatoes. But my mother used to fry up rutabaga instead of potatoes for zero points as well. If rutabaga is something that you like, that would be a good option for this dish as well. And still keep it to one point. Um, other people have told me that they don't like rutabaga and they don't think it tastes the same. So I personally have never had it. So personal preference for everybody else if you want to try it, I guess. I have nothing against it. But I'm going to... Get you turned around, get show you everything I got going on here, and I'll show you what you have to do. Um, we're going to start off by getting about six to eight. It kind of depends on the size, but you're going to want six to eight good size russet potatoes. You're going to want to clean them up, slice them, peel them, however you normally do it. I know some people don't like to peel them, they like the skin, but I peel them, wash them off. I got this cool little veggie scrub brush from my mother-in-law thank you mom it is wonderful she got it off amazon it's called greeneth pro and it's got like a hard bristle side and the soft bristle side it is so good for scrubbing potatoes let me tell you what we are going to use a few slices of the kroger's center cut double smoked bacon you are going to sear it up in a pan into little chunks with onion with a whole onion diced one of the secret ingredients to make this cheesy scalp potato still absolutely delicious and low point is right here now this is something i purchased off the amazon i can't find it in the store it is eleven dollars and 99 cents currently for a whole container but my containers almost empty but it comes full and one tablespoons one point it goes a very long way I make my macaroni and cheese with this I make a whole bunch of different dishes with this it is a good investment it's something you can put in your pantry and have as like a pantry staple thing but I'll get the camera turned around show you all the rest of the ingredients so let's get started Okay, guys, I got y'all turned around here. I went ahead and I sliced up my potatoes and I peeled them and got them all beautiful soaking in some water right now while I get this next part going. You are going to spray a saute pan, whatever one's your favorite, this one happens to be mine, with some cooking spray. I like the butter flavor. Just personal preference. We are going to take five slices of this private selection center cut double smoked bacon. I get this from Kroger's. I'm going to take five slices of that. Just The easiest way I found is just to take some kitchen scissors and slice it up that way. It's just easier for me that way. I have... A sweet onion here we're gonna dice this up and we are going to caramelize and saute so that's gonna be our next step so I'll get this all going and I'll come right back all right I got my onion and my bacon all diced up in the pan let me tell you what this smells so good and this onion and bacon is really going to give your cheesy scalp potatoes wonderful flavor. That caramelized onion. And it doesn't matter what kind of onion you, you use. You can use whatever kind you got. I just have the sweet onion, so that's what I used. So we're going to let that do its thing off to the side there. And I'm going to show you what I got going on next. So we're going to get one can of cream of chicken soup, the fat-free one. And 
get it going in our mixing bowl here. You're going to want to have your oven preheating to 375 degrees. Now this dish does take forever to cook, but all good things come with time, right? <laughs> It'll be worth it, trust me. And this is one of those dishes that is kind of like chili. It's better the next day. It's something that like the flavors just men together. I don't know. This is something that my my mama used to make for us all the time. And I heard of a few Weight Watcher members that had trouble with this particular dish because it was so good. And they couldn't, they didn't want to stop. And so we take our can that we scraped into the mixing bowl. And that's why we're making this healthier version to show everybody it's okay. Anyways, you take this empty can that you just scraped into the dish there, the mixing bowl. You're going to get the regular Carb Master milk. You want to fill this can all the way to the tippy top. And then you are going to pour that. Whoops, I bumped my camera, guys. Sorry. You're going to pour that right on into our mixture here. I'm going to make a mess. That's okay. All right, so we got our soup mixture in there, and we have our Carb Master Kroger milk in there. Next is three tablespoons. Three tablespoons of our cheesy goodness deliciousness powder. I love this stuff. tablespoons of our Big Daddy Mac Mix. And like I said, that's something I get off Amazon. And then we're going to need about a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Get my measuring spoons out here. Now you can sub regular paprika if you don't have smoked paprika, but that smokiness gives it a really good flavor. All right, and then next we're gonna do a little bit of onion powder. I know we already have caramelized onion, but the onion powder, I know this is a new bottle. I gotta open it, sorry guys. The onion gives it a really good flavor. Onion and potatoes just goes together. Okay, and then chopped chives, chopped chives, freeze-dried chives, um, whatever one you have that you're going to want about a tablespoon of, give or take. And you know what? I don't have that much left, so why not? We're going all in. I got to remember to put that on the shopping list now. I'm going to forget it. All right. And then last but not least, we are going to want about a tablespoon of fresh minced garlic or garlic powder. If you have garlic powder, if you're using garlic powder, do about one teaspoon because garlic powder is more potent than fresh garlic, I feel. So I'm going to do about a tablespoon, our house loves garlic, it's going to be a heaping tablespoon, but about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Okay. And anybody who's watched my channel knows 
I love my carb quick. I just love it. I can't help it. Now I'm going to use three, one, two, three, three tablespoons. I got to stir my bacon over here. Oop, broke my camera again. Three tablespoons of the flour. Now that's just going to be a thickening agent pretty much. And it's going to help thicken the cheese sauce while it's cooking with the potatoes. I can't close up my carb quick here. There we go. We're just going to mixy, 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 mixy. Look how yellow that cheese powder made this. Mmm, so good. I'm just going to get this mixed up. And I'm going to finish caramelizing my onion and frying up my bacon. And I'll come right back and show you the next steps. I almost forgot our salt and pepper. We can't forget our salt and pepper. I like using the pink Himalayan salt, just personal preference. Potatoes can handle a lot of salt. That's one thing potatoes can handle a lot of. So just do it to your personal preference. But you're going to want some black pepper and salt in your cheese mixture. All right, I got my cheese sauce mixture all mixed up and looking and smelling delicious. I almost burnt my bacon, guys. But we're good. It's salvageable. <laughs> and got this all caramelized, looking good. All right, I'm going to show you my next steps here. All right, I have one of these uh, throwaway bacon dishes left over from Easter. I'm just going to spray the bottom and the sides of it with my cooking spray. You are going to want to take a little bit of your cheese sauce and put it on the bottom. Not a whole bunch. You just essentially want a little bit on the bottom to make the potatoes not like cling to it and get stuck and burnt. My oven just got done preheating to 375 degrees. We are going to put this in the oven at 375 degrees for one hour. And then we, 30 minutes in, we are going to, and you're just going to take your potatoes and just do like a relatively single layer right on the bottom. Um, after 30 minutes of this being in the oven, you're going to take and stir it up, mix it up. And the reason why you're doing this and kind of layering it is it makes sure every piece of potato gets coated with a little something, something and deliciousness. And just a little bit of effort and it'll reap big rewards so we are going to take some of our caramelized onion and bacon probably about a third of what you got in the pan and you're just gonna spread it throughout and you're just gonna layer everything through kind of like you would a lasagna whoops I just knocked off my child safety knob for my stove. I'll put it back on in a minute. No biggie. All right, and we're just going to spread a little layer of our cheesy goodness. And then we're just gonna keep on going until our potatoes are done. 
and not flung all over the counter. So I'm gonna keep on layering and I will show you what it looks like when I come back. All right, this usually does about three layers. That's how I normally do it. I got my last bit of potatoes in the pan here and I'm gonna put the last bit of the caramelized onions and bacon mixture right on top. So yummy, 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 yummy. I've had a rough week this past week and we definitely just needed some comfort food in our system in this house. And we need to do it healthy because I haven't been on doing YouTube videos this past week because I just kind of fell off the bandwagon and it's time to pick yourself back up and get back on there. So you're just going to put the rest of the cheese mixture over top and... Get her all good and delicious. Now, if you're like me like this and you find that the potatoes aren't quite covered, what I want you to do is get you some water and just add a little extra water in there because it's going to evaporate and go down anyway. You only want more liquid because you don't want the potatoes drowning you don't want the potatoes drowning but you do want the potatoes almost covered in liquid that way it cooks properly and all the way through so let me go get some water and i'll come right back or if you want you can add more milk all right so i just put a little bit of water in my mixing bowl you don't have to worry about mixing it in just a little bit so something like that, about like that. I hope you guys can see it good on the camera. You just want it so the potatoes aren't drowning, but you want them covered. Now, something I don't always do, but I love the flavor of it. I can't help it. A little bit of nutritional yeast right on top. This is not necessary by any means. I just personally like the flavor. It gives it that nutty, delicious flavor. So 375 degrees. We're going to pop this in the oven. You can cover it if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm going to put this in a 375 degree oven for a total of an hour. But we're going to stop at 30 minutes. We're going to stir it up and mix it up and then pop it back in for another 30 minutes. So 375, 30 minutes. I'll come back and show you when I mix it. All right, 30 minutes has been up in a 375 degree oven. We just take it out and you just want to stir it around just to make sure everything gets cooked evenly and well coated. I might have added a little tidbit too much liquid, but we'll see how she turns out. I'm sure it'll thicken up. It'll be fine. Knock on wood, I'm going to jinx myself. <laughs> There we go. So now that it's been cooking for 30 minutes and we mixed it up, I'm going to put it back into the 375 degree oven for an additional 30 minutes. And then at that point, that's when we are going to pull it out of the oven. We're going to turn the oven up to 400 degrees and we're going to bake it for another 15 to 20 minutes. At that point, if you wanted to top it with more cheese, you could. Um, you will have to add the points for that, though. I won't be doing that but because it's cheesy enough. But if you wanted to top it with something, then you could do it at that point. But next, what we're going to do is put it back in the oven 375 degrees for another 30 minutes. Okay, now I... 
took it, it's been in the oven for another 30 minutes at 375 degrees. And I just stirred it up. I did add a little bit more salt. I actually added my onion salt. But we're just gonna stir it up. And this is pretty well done. We are just gonna pop it in a 400 degree oven now for about 15 minutes. Now at this point, if you wanted to add cheese to the top of it, you could add the cheese to a top of it. If you're using fat-free cheese, make sure you spray your fat-free cheese with the cooking spray. That gives it the little bit of fat it needs without the points so it melts properly. But it's cheesy enough for me. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pop this back in the oven for 400 degrees for about 15 more minutes and then she's going to be done. And let me tell you what, my whole house smells like this dish. Mmm, and it smells so good. I'm actually going to be serving it with some smoked pork chops, Hormel smoked pork chops. I get them from my local meat market. And you can have four ounces of them for only two points. They are center cut. And I'm then I'm going to be serving them with Brussels sprouts as well. And that's going to be my three-point dinner. So when it's all done, I'll get it all plated up and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, I got it out of the oven now. And let me tell you what, it smells amazing. And this will thicken as it cools too. I got to hurry because I don't know if you can hear my background, but my baby is like, uh-uh, mom. Let's go right now. <laughs> but this will thicken as it cools. And all that cheesy goodness is soaked all up into those potatoes and everything. And I like to give it just one more little mixeroo and try not to get my arm all up in the camera. I'm sorry, guys. But these potatoes are absolutely amazing. And if you wanted to add more cheese, take a quarter cup for zero points of the fat-free shredded cheese. And you put it right on your plate on top of your uh, serving. And it wouldn't add any points and add more cheese if you want it. But look at this. This, I'm telling you friends, it's going to be absolutely delicious. Thanks for watching. I'll put in a little picture after this of my plate. But thanks for watching. I appreciate you supporting my channel and supporting my videos. And I hope all of this, all these videos that I make help out you on your weight loss journey as well. Don't forget to like my video and comment below and subscribe for more. I appreciate all of you helping me and supporting me with my channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. Here we go, guys. I have four ounces of my smoked pork chops. For two points, I have Brussels sprouts. Oh, I absolutely love Brussels sprouts. And I have a serving of my cheesy scalp potatoes. I did add a quarter cup of fat-free cheese for zero points. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop.